Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and with another video for you and today we are going to do some stitching. So we're going to stitch five cactus plants that I've designed for you and I'll put the design and the stitch plan and the templates and the outlines for these on my free stuff page on the website and I'll put the link in the description below this video and you can go and download that for free if you want to have a go at these. So I'm just going to run through my setup here because somebody always asks me about this. So I'm using table clamps to hold my frame with. You only need one table clamp. I've got two just to keep it extra steady under the camera. And I've got my fabric on some stretcher bar frames, nice and tight with the backing fabric on, pinned to the frame, ready to stitch on. So I'm going to use all stranded cottons for this stranded floss. You can use whatever thread you like, experiment, because there'll be some really great textures that you could use to make your cactus effects. Um, but I'm going to use stranded, and I'll tell you how many strands I'm using throughout. And I'm going to use different makes as well, just to mix them up a bit, and I'll talk about those when I get to them as well. So let's just get going with number one. So I'm going to start with this one here, nice simple shape. To get going so this is a really good example of how you can build up some stitches to create some different effects we're going to use quite simple stitches we've got a stitch library with loads of stitches in it if you want to know how to do these stitches in more detail you can go and check that out and i'm using three strands here i've got quite a dark green and i'm just going to do a laid work across here so i'm just going to lay my stitches diagonally right across this shape i'm going to fill in the whole shape with these long stitches. I'm going to come up and down on the same side. Now this just reduces the amount of thread that I use. Rather than going round and round the shape, it just comes up and down, which also helps a little bit with your tension on it. You're just up and down on the same side. And get your stitches nice and close together so we're just going to fill the shape in solidly nothing more to it than that so just come straight up with your needle straight back down don't do it at an angle because that will move it i'm just going to fill in that whole shape just putting the last few stitches of this laid work while i'm doing that i'll just tell you how i got the design onto the fabric so i printed the design off from our free PDF and I traced them on and I used a water soluble pen so these blue marks will come off if I haven't quite covered them just a light spray with some water will get that off but you can use a pen normal pen just make sure you cover your lines we've got um, a good video on how to transfer your design if you want a different method and to see how to do that in more detail so there's the last stitch of that and you can just weave that through on the back because I've got my frame fastened down for the camera, I'm just going to finish it on the front. A few little stitches. I've got videos on how to start and finish your stitches as well, so do check out our library. We've got loads and loads of videos in there. Okay, so we've got the main part down. So what we're going to do now is put in the little spiny bits. So I've got a paler green that I'm going to use now, very pale green. Just got a single strand, and we're going to do some random eyelets. So I'm just going to start again in between these stitches, but you can just weave it through some of your stitches on the back just to get that thread going. It doesn't really matter where you start with this, I'm just going to start on the edge because we're going to do these quite random. And the eyelets are just going to go down into the middle, I'm going to choose the middle there, straight down with my needle. I'm just going to go round in a circle, not worrying too much about how long these stitches are or that they're all the same length but they need to go down in the same point if you can Try and get the same middle and you can just vary how long and short these are and on this actual cactus these bits are quite dense so I'm going to put lots of stitches in keep them close together but we want them to overlap a little bit so I'm going to make them different lengths and overlap the one that I do next to it. Don't come out at an angle. If you come out of an angle, you'll move your stitches. So straight up with your needle, straight down into the middle. You can be quite free with this. Make them a bit longer, a bit shorter. And go all the way around. Don't jump because it'd be hard to get the 
needle down the center and do that. Just follow it round, and if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise, just go round in a circle. Another one in there, I think, last one there. So we've done the first one, and we're just going to fill that whole area in with these. So I'm going to come up between those two there, find the middle of the next one, which I'm going to decide is there, and again off we go, round in that circle. It's random legs. Now try and cross them over if you can. That makes it look a little bit more realistic, like the real thing. These nice even spaces in between them. This sort of covers the whole cactus, so you can really layer these. Just go around this one to show you the effect. And these stitches will hold these green ones underneath down, so they're a bit long and they move a bit, but when you've got these stitches in, it's eyelet stitches that will hold that all in place. So there's my second one. So I suggest you put the whole ones in first and then we can think about the edges when we get there. We'll just do half ones for the edges. I'm just going to keep overlapping these now and fill in the whole of that space and then I'll come back and we'll have a little look at that edge. Okay, so I filled in all the main ones but we've got the edge to deal with. So we're going to pretend that they're just going around the top. So I'm going to make the outside now the middle. And these are all going to go from the edge to the middle, but we'll just do half a one because the other half is on the other side. And see what I mean when I've done it. So I've done a couple here, just disappearing off the edge. We'll just do one right on the edge there. And come back to the other side. Exactly the same way, but we're just kind of doing half an eyelet, if you like like so and then we'll do one more over here and just do that corner as well um, and then I think we'll call that done so outside down into the middle which is now the edge I need a new thread in a second but overlap them as before so exactly the same just doing half a one on this last little corner let's make the middle about there so we're doing three quarters of a one no different all the way around down into the centre. You can see already it's beginning to look like a cactus. So easy just to put two simple stitches together to create the effect that you want. Doesn't have to be really complicated. All the way around the edge. Don't worry that they're shorter. That's for you. It doesn't even matter if you come off the edge a little bit. These are spiny things that are sticking out, so... Okay, that's my last one. Don't worry about the blue marks. we get those off later. Again, if you're using a permanent pen, make sure you go over those lines because they're not going to come off. Let's finish that. Cut it off. So what I'm going to do now is add a little flower. And the great thing about these plants is you can just go mad with the flower colours. They're really bright and amazing colours. So I'm going to do it in this bright pink. I'm going to put it sort of there, not right in the middle, I think. Let's go over there a little bit with it. So just off centre both ways, just makes a little bit more interesting composition. And I'm going to do a detached chain. You might know this is Lazy Daisy. Detached chains make a Lazy Daisy. So I'm making a loop, coming up inside the loop, making these quite long because these are going to be the petals down the other side of the loop just to finish that stitch off. I'm just going to go round in a circle with these. Now don't worry about filling in the middle because I'm going to put a couple of French knots in the middle so you don't have to come up and down in the same place but just make these petals a bit of a different length just makes them a bit more interesting. Again going round in a sort of a circle but don't worry too much. A bit longer. 
you can see how lovely this pink shows up against that dark green so just think about the colours that you're using make sure they're nice contrasts and they stand out really well i've got a whole video all about colour in embroidery if you're not too sure how to choose your colours and what works with what there's some good rules in there that you can follow to help you pick your colours so do check that one out as well and i'm just stitching over the stitching underneath not worrying about what's where just as if that was the surface of the fabric so i'm going to go through some of those stitches we've already done that's fine a little bit thicker to go through but it's okay needles nice and sharp quite a fine needle for this i've got two strands for these flower petals so number nine works quite nicely number nine embroidery for that And then I think we'll get one more in there. Nice bright flower, and we're going to put in some centres. Now these flowers have a nice, gorgeous orangey yellow centre. Put the needle over there for a moment. Let's get rid of that knot because it looks unsightly. So I've got my nice orangey yellow. I'm going to do a couple of French knots. Now. You just need to thread it through some stitches on the back. Try and be clever and do that without turning it over. There you go. Turn yours over and do it. It's just because mine's fastened down that I'm not going to do that. But yeah, turn it over. Just weave it under a few stitches just to start your thread off. You don't want these coming out. And then a little group of French knots in the middle. Now, if French knots are your nemesis, we have the ultimate guide to French knot video tells you all about them how to do them what to do when they're going wrong and why they're going wrong and after that video you'll love them i'm going to be doing hundreds of them i hope <laughs> so there we go just little three french knots in the middle you can see that beautiful bright yellow color so just cut that knot off so that's my um plant actually stitched now what i have done for the plant pots now you can either pop that over there for now i will turn that frame over and finish these threads on the back afterwards but want to show you the plant pot so i've given you um, some templates of five plant pots and um, you can mix and match them you can change the colors you can stitch them if you want to i've cut mine out of felt i really love using felt and it's nice and quick for this video because i've got five plants to get through um, but you can just satin stitch this if you wanted to you can draw the outline onto your fabric or you can cut them out of felt and have some fun with your felt colors i'm going to stitch that down in matching colours. So I'm going to do this one quite simply first just to show you how you can put the felt down really easily and then you can decorate your pots which we'll do a bit later. We'll do some more decorative stuff. I just want to show you how to get the felt down. It's actually a gold work technique for putting your felt. So if you check out my gold padding video it's the same way, same way of doing it. So my knot on the top, that's a waste knot that gets cut off. And because I'm putting my plant pot over this space, I can just do my two small starting stitches there. Put that in position. You can put a pin to hold it if you want, but I'm just going to put my first stitch in the corner. Now come up in the fabric and stab down into the felt. And just work my way around the plant pot. Let's go across the top first. Probably two or three millimetres. Sixteenth of an inch. Very good in inches. So up on the outside, down into the felt, that will make sure the felt doesn't disintegrate. If you come up the other way through the felt, you end up poking holes in it where you try and work out where you want the needle. So much easier to stab down into that and give it a instant plant pot. I think they look really cute. And you can have a go at designing your own plant pot if you want. You don't have to use mine. Look on the internet, lots of really interesting shapes and sizes. You could applique a bit of fabric, loads of options. So, I'm going to go all the way around there and then we'll have a look at the finished one. So, last stitch going in there, really cute, really quick as well. And all I did to get my plant pot shape is I cut the template out of the paper, cut the template out, put it on the felt. You can either draw around it and cut that out, or you can just cut straight around it. 
very easy to do that. Let's cut that off. Let's cut my waist knot off. And that is all there is to it. So, cactus number one done. Let's have a look at number two. Okay, so for this one we're going to do a different stitch. You can mix and match all these. It's what's really great about these. They're really sweet little designs to do, but you can swap the stitches over. But we've done a laid work on the first one. So now we're going to do a satin stitch, which goes round and round the shape. And this is a smaller shape, so it's a bit harder to do the laid work on this. And satin stitch can cover a little bit better as well, because you're not trying to come up and down next to the point where you came in and out. So you can get your stitches a little bit close together. So I've got three colours. For this, three different kinds of green. I'm using two strands of each colour. And I'm just going to do this satin stitch at a slant. Much easier to do it at a slant than it is to go straight across. We'll have a go straight across later. So up and down on that line. And I'm going to just do slightly different green colours in these different sections. Just to sort of get a bit of dimension as if the light was shining off them. They're really strange plants these they do all sorts of magical weird and wonderful things and try and replicate that in the stitches that we choose so I'm actually using um a really cheap synthetic embroidery thread for this and um, i like the colors of it we've got a few more later as well i did do a video on whether cheap embroidery threads are any good so check that out if you haven't seen it and you see what you think i quite like them and certainly for a little project like this they're fine you might not want to do an heirloom in them but you can see how shiny they are as well, really nice and shiny. Stitch really beautifully. I like the colours, so I'm going to mix them a little bit. I'm not worried about using the same one. So I'm just going to do my satin stitch all the way to the top. Just going to turn it round so it's sort of vertical when we get to the top. And I'm going to come back down to the centre and go the other way. Satin stitch can get quite technical about which side you come up and down on and we do have a video explaining that and a free download all about angles gets a bit mathematical so don't worry too much just put some straight stitches in. <laughs> Try and do them as close together as you can. And you'll notice I started in the middle that will set the angle all the way down but keep it at that angle sort of sliding that needle under that previous one that helps to tuck the stitch in nice and closely and you get this beautiful shiny thread effect so this one's quite simple this is all i'm going to do for this one I'll do something a bit fancier with the pot when we get down to the pot i'm not going to put any flowers on this i just like the mixture of the greens just to show that you don't have to put everything in it you can do something quite simple but still looks really effective let's cut that waist knot off because it's getting in the way that's better down to the bottom all right i'm going to leave that one in because there's some thread to use there and i'm going to do that color again so i'm going to leave that in there can pick that up later Bring in my second colour. Not too different these colours, I just wanted sort of different variations on a theme really. So I put my knot down here out of the way. Don't put it in the area you're stitching in if you can avoid it. And I'm going to do my satin stitch the other way now. So I've got one going that way and the other one that way, so they meet in a V in the middle. I'm going to share that hole, so I'm going to go upwards first. Nice and close, try and get that edge nice and even. If you can, just come straight up on the edge. You can just angle it a little bit in the middle towards that last one. It just tucks it in really nicely. Nice and simple, this one. So I'm just going to do that throughout. I'm going to mix the colours up a little bit. You'll see those when I get near the end, what I've done with that. You can choose your colours. So I'll get these ones done, and you can join me again when I've done a few more of them. So I've been down this side and up the other side, and I'm just on these last few stitches now. And you can see how I've just changed my colours, just three of them. Swapped them around a bit just for a bit of interest. Just finishing off my satin stitch. Then we can put the pot on. 
put it in the pot. Squeeze one more in there, I think. Like so. Push that off on the back. And then I just want to show you, before I put the pot on, how I get these blue marks out. So if you have used a water-soluble pen, you don't need to stick it under the tap. Um, you can give it a light spray if you like at the end. Um, do check that your threads are colour fast because otherwise it will be running all over the place and you don't want that. If it's got a washing thing on the label, washing instructions on the label, then you're good to go. So I've just got some water in a brush. Make sure it's clean water. I'm just going to go around the edge. I prefer this because you don't have to get the whole thing wet. And it just disappears. If it just comes back, just do it again. It will come off and then that will just dry and all the marks are gone. Right, so let's put the plant pot on now. Nice simple square plant pot for this one. I've done it in purple. Purple and green always works well together. Uh, let's stick my knot out there, start my thread underneath as before. And you can start to add some decorative stitches if you like at this point. So I'm going to stitch it down the same way with some stab stitches. So make sure it's on square. The cat's waking up, time for his tea shortly. Tim, tell me when that is. So, the same as before, on the outside, down into the felt, stab down into it. That means you don't distort the felt in any way. I'm going to go all the way around the square and then we'll put some little details on it. I told you it would be dinner time soon, didn't I? It's dinner time, so I'll just have to wait while I finish this. So I'm going to put a few beads on here because I like my beads. Don't need an excuse to use them. Just going to thread them on. Do a little row of them across the top here. A little back stitch. You could go mad with the plant pots, <laughs> put whatever you like on them. Those are stitching, but just a few beads is going to look really nice because there aren't any flowers on this plant, so you can just put a bit of colour in with our pot decoration. So just doing a row across the top like that, really simple, but just so you can see how you can start to add some little details. So let's finish that off, cut the knot off. And that's cactus number two finished, so on to number three. So Ginger Cat's been fed and decided to come back and sit <laughs> right in front of the frame. So I hope you didn't want to see my hand underneath because he's settled down well and truly. Um, but as long as he stays there and doesn't sit on any threads, I think we'll be all right. So let's get going and <laughs> see what happens. Just like a bit of company, don't you, mate? It's all you ask for in life. Some food. Okay, so I'm going to work this area of this um, cactus first, and I'm going to try a different stitch. I'm going to do fish bone stitch. So these are just all variations on how to fill in a shape, really. Um, and I've actually mixed, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, two different greens in the needle. I thought I'd just try this. I haven't actually tried it yet, so it may not work. And I've done a slightly lighter one with a dark one and I'm hoping it will just give it a little bit more interest when we do the stitch. I did think about having two needles and doing two colours and I thought let's let's go for an easier option and just try it with two in the needle and see what happens. Might not work but the world will carry on turning so it doesn't matter if it doesn't. So I'm going to just start with a little straight stitch and all this stitch does is just crosses over the centre line. Now I've actually drawn myself in a couple of guidelines here. I want that angle to be roughly like that so that's just going to guide me all the way down. And I'm just going to cross over that centre line, take my needle down just the other side and then I come up on the opposite side of the leaf. Is it a leaf? It's a cat? I don't know. Someone will 
tell me somebody will know these things and I'm just lining my thread up with that angle there and then it's going to go over that center line and just take my needle down the other side and it's just going to cross in the center each time so that will give a sort of a little detail in the middle rather than just filling it all in flat and hopefully I can see a bit of that color coming through so I'm hopeful that that might work should do at this point what I pra uh, practice what I preach um, and talk about sampling if you don't know how to do something sample it and try it first just so you don't waste loads of time doing something that's not going to work but I think this is going to work and I'm just going to go with it anyway but it is worth having a spare frame you even got one here tried a little cactus on it so just to try out sizes and colours and stuff so it is worth having one to hand and you can just try a little bit of what you want to do so you don't waste loads of thread and loads of time taking something out because it's not right so do check the video out on that if you want to know a bit more about that and what that's all about it's actually going in quite nice you can see a little bit of that light green so I'm just going to do that all the way down really just crossing over the middle each time Get a nice solid effect up on the edge, straight up with my needle. Follow the angle over that centre line all the way down. So we do a little bit more. So you can see what that looks like. I'm going to fill them all in the same colour. Now this is a Christmas cactus, really beautiful, vibrant colours. So I'm just going to stick to these three and see what that looks like. I may not need loads and loads of colours to stay bright and Christmassy and colourful. So let's just see if this works. Nice rich green and I've got a nice couple of pinks as well. Really nice bright pinks. So Right, I'm quite pleased with that effect actually, how that's coming out. Excuse me. Let's snore. He settles down. Time of life, isn't it, neat? Okay, I'm going to carry on to the bottom. We'll see what that looks like, and then just these are the ones to go. So, just want to show you what happens when you get to the bottom because you run out of middle bit to go over, but you've still got some space left. So, the last one I did was on the left. I'm just going to sort of keep the stitch going, but just do a satin stitch. So, it'll just be down on the line. I can just keep going down this side and finish that off. So just sort of continue the stitch so it looks like the rest of the stitch, but you can't go over the centre now. So it's just straight stitches. All the way to the bottom. That's one in like that, and I really like that effect of those two colours. thought they were so similar, they might not show, but they do, they look really good. So, happy with that. So I'm going to go and do this other one here, and this one, and the bottom one, and then I'll come and show you how I put the flowers in. So I just finished that last bit of green, but I thought I'd show you how to finish on the back. Um, so just turn your frame over, there's my last stitch, and all you need to do is just slide your needle under some of the stitches. And you could do it again, you can come back on yourself if you like. Just pushing up underneath with my finger, just to make it a little bit easier. And just twice is enough, that's all you need to do. Just cut off the thread. And you've got a nice neat finish on the back. So there's the finished green, quite pleased with how that came out, quite pleased with that. So let's have a little look at the flowers. I've got two pinks here, I'm going to do a bit of long and short. Don't panic when I say long and short. It's a tiny little bit, it's really, um, it's going to be really easy on something that size. You could just satin stitch it if you wanted to. Some French knots in it. Careful not to stick the needle in the cat underneath. I'm going to start from the point with a light pink. I've got two pinks, a light and a dark, just one strand of each. 
and they'll just like a little satin stitch but make your stitches a different length just going to do a little short one and a long one it's really a long and not so long just turning it a little bit to make that nice sharp point everything should come in towards the top of this leaf here it shouldn't come off down the side here because that won't make any sense just point them in a little bit when you go back into the fabric look at the angle that stitch is going now bit of a gap there so I'll just jump in and put another one in easy to fix this if you want to put more stitches in just put another stitch in one down one side I'm going to go back to that point now and I'm going to come down the other side right up on that edge and everything should be heading towards this point here not pointing out there heading into there and then that should get your angle nice and easy we've got lots of videos on long and short we've got two projects the pansy um, is a good one if you want to start this technique we've got two one showing you the technique and then i'll show you how to apply it to natural flower it goes quite in depth so if you're interested in this as a technique then do check those out just going to make this little point on the other side they're quite interesting shapes these flowers the other two are different so you just follow the shape that you've got same process make that one a bit shorter and i'm going to actually stop there i'm going to leave that thread in i'm just going to park it next to that leaf there we'll get rid of rid of that waste knot because I might want to come back and put another odd stitch in. So I shall leave it there until I've decided. Now this is a dark pink one strand of not back there. Just got room to start it in there or you can turn it over and weave it through on the back like I just did to finish my thread. Just got room to put two little starting stitches in. And then I'm going to come out of that I'll just break that up a little bit now and just make the bottom of the flower a dark pink it's quite a small space this so I'm not going to get many stitches in you can see how I'm still angling them towards that green leaf and I'm taking my needle through those and now I can come right down and connect it to the leaf let's do the same this side you just get a little bit of shading a bit of dark in the middle of that flower you could just do it all one color if you like in the long and short if you just want to practice doing those stitches and filling in that shape you don't need to change color but it's easy just to add in that second one at the bottom like so there's a bit of a gap there so i should just go in and fill in so easy to fix this people panic about this stitch and it's not quite right so i'll just Find another stitch in. Easy to do. Look, you can just go over the top, cover that gap, and then just to make sure it's connected to the leaf, there's enough stitches in there. Let's put, I think, one more in. That's really beautiful colour with that green. Okay. I'm actually happy with that, so I didn't need that light one. But what I'll do is I will finish those on the back and I'll start them again over here. Don't jump across there, it's a little bit too far to jump. Finish it off, start again, and I'll do these two over here. And then we just have to stick it in a pot. Got quite a traditional pot for this one. We've gone for a proper plant pot shape. <laughs> Not that that is. And I'm going to use slightly darker thread for this one and make the dark thread. It's purring really loudly if you can hear that. Apologise for the sound quality. I'm going to use the colour of that thread to make the pattern on it. So I'm just going to tack it down in a couple of places, I think, because this one's a little bit bigger. I want to make sure it doesn't move. Let's just do all the corners.
Pull that corner. So exactly the same as I did before, just to point the outside down into the felt. Like a little t-shirt. <laughs> oh, it's getting to that time of the day. So, <laughs> so I've just tacked it in place and I'm going to do, let's do the corner. I'm going to do a little buttonhole along the top. So we just go down into the felt, make a loop, come up in the loop, pull that tight down into the felt. I'm trying to do it so you can see it. Make the loop, up in the loop on the outside, pull it to the outside. I'm kind of doing it upside down so it might look a little bit awkward, but I'm just kind of making a decorative top to it so you can put any stitch you like on these. This is um it's a blanket stitch rather than a buttonhole. Buttonhole would be nice and the stitches will be close together, blanket stitch are a bit wider apart. But otherwise you work them in the same way. I'm just going to change my thread now because that's a little bit difficult to work with. Just using a single thread for this. So if we want to carry on that, come back up where we left off so it's actually attached to that previous stitch. I can show you a bit more easily now. I've got my thread. So up inside the loop, tension it away, tension it to the outside of your stitch, whichever way that up that happens to be. And we'll just go all the way along the top. To go over that tacking stitch, right to the end, and that makes a kind of rim to my plant pot. And we'll do the corner one as well because that just keeps that secure. And then to finish that off, we just go down the other side like so, and then I think I'll just tack this bit. In place, just a few stitches, and then we can put a little bit of shading on our pot. So, all I'm going to do is take a straight stitch as before, but a bit longer now, and then we'll do another one underneath it a little bit shorter, and then we'll just do a normal length packing stitch. That sort of gives our pot a little bit of definition, if you like. And then we come around the bottom. Could do a blanket stitch along the bottom as well if I wanted to. And just have some fun playing and venting. See what you can come up with. Inside, so one, and then there's a. Trying to line those up. Bit longer for this one. Just going to get that knot out of the way so I'm not fighting with it. A long one for that one. That thread, so I'll just change my thread just to finish off those last few stitches if I can find my brown thread which I think I know, it's going to blame the cat then but that's a bit unfair for once he's not on my thread. Okay, last few stitches, always annoying when that happens. It runs out just when you've got a few more to do. But while it's in there, I'm just going to take one long one. 
playing at the top of that one, just to sort of define that rim of the pot. Just playing now, making it up as I go along, really, but you can see how easy that is to do. You can pull them out if you don't like them. And so I think I'm going to leave that there. Let's finish that off. Pull that one done, because I think that's looking quite good. I'll cut all my ends off nice and tidy. There we go. So there is one Christmas cactus. Now they have quite a lot of these flowers on them. I wasn't going to do any more than that because they go on forever, these plants. Um, but you could just keep adding to them. Those flowers are really easy um, and just make this mad crazy Christmas cactus. So you can keep going with that one. Um, but I'm going to stop there, quite liking that one. Um, and it's on to number four. So let's try another different stitch for this one. We're going to do a fly stitch. And I'm using three strands for this. I'm just going to see if beefing up the number of my stitches. It's obviously going to go in a bit quicker, but let's see what that looks like. Right. So to start this one, actually the same as the previous one, we're going to put that little straight stitch in first, and then we're going to work either side of that. So we come up one side, down the other. We make a loop, come up in the loop at the end of that little stitch we just made. And we pull it tight and then to finish it we go down at the end of it. So I'm going to do this a solid one. So this is a closed fly stitch. You can do an open one. It leaves nice big V shapes but these cacti are quite solid things. <laughs> we don't really want an open one for this so I'm going to do a closed one. So when I take my stitch over that to finish it off and take it right up to that previous one and that will mean my stitch stitches all bunch up next to each other and we'll get a nice solid filling. So I'm just going to work my way down here. Pin that loop. Tension it down the other side of the loop nice and close. And this gives quite a nice textured one, especially with three strands in it. You can see already that that's got a really lovely texture to it so just experiment with the number of strands you don't need to always do the finest I probably wouldn't go more than three because you tend to get a bit of a gap at the edge where you come in and out of the fabric because it does get a little bit rope like if you go any more than three but I'm quite liking this three so I'm going to go all the way to the bottom with this one I have got a darker colour um, I'll see how I feel when I get there, and whether I want to put that one in or not, and um, then we'll have a look at that and see what goes on this one next, because this one is going to have a few more elements to it. So I'm going to try um, and put a dark one in, because I want to see what that looks like. So I'm not just going to go light and then down to dark, I'm just going to put one stitch in in the dark, then go back to the light for a few stitches, and then put another couple of dark stitches in. Just sort of as we get to the bottom, shade it. Now, when I'm not using my thread, bring it back to the top because otherwise you're just going to get in a nasty mess underneath. I promise you that will happen. And the way to get your thread back down is to pull in the opposite direction that it came from, came from over here because that's where I finished the stitch. And it should open up the hole and the needle should go back down the hole. If it doesn't, you can take it out on the back and unthread your needle and just pull it out. So there's another light one. I think I'll just put the second one in. I want to go sort of gradually from light to dark. I don't really want it to be stripy. I'm trying to try and get a bit of blending in it. So I'm going to do two light ones. And then I'll park that one there. And if you just park it nearby, if it doesn't go back through the fabric, it doesn't matter. You've only got a little stitch on the back. But if you park it up here in, and outside, then you've got potential problems. So. A little tip for you. So back in with the dark. Oops. Now I've run out of middle bit at the bottom. So all I'm going to do this with this now is just satin stitch this, as we did on that previous stitch. 
and we ran out of the middle on the fish bone to go over just sat and stitched it it will carry on the look of the the stitch it's quite a nice little blend and if you look from a distance that is quite blended it's not too stripy I might start the dark one a bit higher up on this one over here so I'm sort of always experimenting and playing that's what's fun about it it's no right or wrong with this embroidery police won't come round and tell you you've done it wrong which is what's really nice about this past time so that's one on that side done that went in quite quickly with three strands in so if you want to do them a bit faster use a bit more thread so let's go down the other side and try the same thing and then we're going to add some little details to it so i've put a little bit more shading down this side quite liking that and then i've added a few flowers so i've done the same stitch that i used in the first one that we did so just some detached chain stitches and they're growing quite mad places on cacti so i've just scattered some off the edge and another one in the middle just going to put a couple on the top of this one here just to balance that out a bit got two strands here one more there Finish that on the back, get rid of the knot. And then I just want to add some tiny little details to this one. I've done some simple ones, but you can just keep adding these simple stitches. They're not difficult stitches, but you can keep adding simple stitches and just build up to make what you want to make. So I just want to show you how to do that. I've got a very light green, that green that I've used in the top of it. I'm just going to put some little spiky bits on it because a cactus is not a cactus without spiky bits on it, let's face it. Just lost the end of my thread. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just some straight stitches for this and put these little spiny bits on. around the edge of this. So put the middle one in first. Oh. And the cat's making some funny snoring noises. What well, some night, but you just have to work. So just at the edge, already looking more cactus-like, so I'm going to go all the way around both shapes and then we'll see what's next. I haven't finished yet, <laughs> I'm going to keep going with this one. I'm going to put some beads on it um, and to put the beads down, I'm just going to wax the thread now using a one strand of the normal embroidery thread, but that will just help to stick it together and make it a little bit stronger so the beads don't cut through the thread. Start my thread at the bottom to make sure you use a needle that the beads will go through. It's quite important. <laughs> I'm going to go right up the middle here. I've got some nice green beads that are the same colour. Just up one side, down the other. Just going to put a few on up the middle here. We're going all in on this one. <laughs> What's great about these designs, you can do them really simply and still get a really good effect, or you can just go mad and make alternate cactus. And then I'm going to put some as well. I'm just going to put some on these little spiky bits. I think I'll just put the odd one because I think otherwise. A little bit big, it's going to look a bit too much, so I'll just put the odd one on these bits over here. One down here. I guess you can overdo it with the beads, <laughs> even though I'll admit that. And I'll have a couple at the middle of this one. Thank 
Right, definitely the last one. Oops, that's come off. He's trying to tell me something. It's definitely the last one. The thread said no. More, but I'm going to put one more on. Because threes look better than twos. Smash that thread off in there. Okay, so nice purpley pink plant pot for this one. Make sure I cover the bottom because it's not dead straight at the bottom. Got a matching thread, slightly darker. Going to do it with one. Nice in position, and then just tack down as I did previously. This really is the final. Final detail, I'm going to stop in a minute. I'm going to just match the little flowers, put one on the flower pot. So little detached chains. Matching pot and plant. I don't know if people do that, but I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to put a little bead in the middle. Of the flower. That's quite sweet. Does it need more petals? I mean, it does. <laughs> Let's put in some more. It's a bit spindly without some more petals, so stick a few more in. There we go, that is better. That's the right choice. Finish that in a second. Okay, so a little bit more going on in that one, but that one was quite good fun. Lots of stuff going on, lots of nice textures and some different materials as well to use. Um, so I enjoyed that one, so we just got one more to go, so let's get going on that one. So we're going to finish with a prickly pear cactus and this is going to be made of several different stages so I've just worked a few of them so you can see what they are so we're going to work some satin stitch on the bottom first so the bottom layer we're going to build this up in layers the satin stitch first and then I'm going to put this grid over the top quite wide apart in the same color and then we're going to put these little cross stitches down to hold the grid down and they represent the spiny bits of the cactus so let's show you that first stage of the satin stitch. Now I know we've done satin stitch on um, one of the other cacti but I want to show you this one because we're going to do it horizontally now. Now I said in that one that it's much easier to do it at an angle and it is but for this one I want to do it horizontally because I want to put my grid over the top at an angle and if I do these horizontal and the grid horizontal everything all lines up. So I'm going to go straight across with this so it is a little bit trickier to get the edges neat but if you just come straight up on your edge straight back down you should be fine and you'll notice that I'm coming up on the outside of it and going down next to this one where I've already got my stitches this one's kind of overlapping this one if I come up here I put my needle through the stitches and I risk pulling the stitches so I'm going to go down into that side so up on the outside and down into the side that's got the other stitches where it meets the other stitches and I've got three strands in it here as well. The three strands, as we found out with the previous one, just makes it a little bit more 
padded, if you like, just brings them out a little bit and it goes in quite quickly, which we like. Just take care to do it accurately and then I'm just going to go all the way down to the bottom, all the way up to the top and then we'll put the grid on. The last few stitches in at the top, a little bit harder where it's exposed both sides so just take extra care. It is harder to do this satin stitch straight across but I think we're good. Leave it at that. Finish that off in there and then we'll put the grid on. Now I use three for the satin stitch. I'm going to use two strands for the grid. And I wanted to use the same colour for this because I want the little spiny bits to stand out. So I thought we'll just make a bit of texture with this grid over the top but then these stitches all represent those spines. So now we're not going to get many stitches in this. They're quite wide apart. So I'm just going to come up on the edge and what you want to do is do about 45 degrees. So that would be 90 to my stitches like so. So if I just turn it about like that a bit more and then just straight down over the top. We're just laying them on top of the satin stitches that we've already done. This is the tricky bit now is to get that distance. So the little tip for you here is to put the needle in. Don't pull it all the way through. And if you just lie the needle down, you can see where the stitch is going to do, uh, what going to go, where it's going to sit a bit too close. I'm just going to move it down the shape a bit more. Do that again. Happy with that. Then you can pull your needle through. Make sure it's parallel. You don't want it like that. Nice and parallel with that and just dab straight down the other side. Might get one more little one in. That's worth it really, but just put that little one in there. Just keep the stitch going, even if it's only a little bit of it. And then we're going to go the other way over the top of that one. And this now goes 90 degrees to the row you just put in. So, so these make a square, basically. So that's the first one. Again, just bring your needle up a little bit. So that's too wide. That's not making a square. It's making a rectangle. So I'm just going to pull it back a touch. That's better. You can lie it across first so you can see where your needle needs to go. And we'll just get another one in there, I think. Just come down a touch. Go. And there's our grid over the top and then we'll just put those little holding stitches in. Get rid of that and get rid of that. So I've got one strand of pale green for this so that these show up. These are super easy to do. We have got videos on different kinds of trellis stitch. If you want some different patterns for other projects, you can check that out because it's a really nice, really nice looking stitch. And I'm just going to literally put a cross over the top of that join. So this will hold that grid down and hold the satin stitch underneath it. So I'm going to come up, not quite in the middle of the square it makes, but make these quite nice and big so that you can see them. So it doesn't matter which way I go. For this, doing it quite randomly. Now, where you've got a half one, you can just see that the cross section of that cross is there. I'm just going to go over that, just continue the stitch. We'll get one that way as well. And don't forget this little one at the edge here has one just disappearing off the edge. So I'm just going to put that one stitch in like that and that will just make it look complete. I've forgotten the edges. Make sure you go right to the edge. So I'll just finish this one off and I'll have a look at the fruit. So I've got two strands of a nice bright red to do the fruit on the top of this cactus. Uh, let's do this one in the middle to show you. Just going to satin stitch these. And if you want them to 
stand out a little bit more. You can put some padding in first. So I'm going to do my satin stitch diagonal again. But if I just put some stitches underneath that, just fill in that shape in a different direction to the way I would do my satin stitch. After, then we just make a little bit of padding for it. You can put as much as you want in here. It doesn't have to be neat because this is a bit that needs to be neat. So I'm just going to satin stitch over the top of that now. And that will just make them nice and raised and look like really chunky, juicy cactus fruit. Not that you would eat cactus fruit, I don't think. You can eat cactus fruit. Pretty sure you probably can't. And then my satin stitch over the top, and that just raises it up, makes that nice little shape, textured shape. So just to show that you can add, keep adding to these stitches, the more stitching you do, the more knowledge you'll get. And you can just start to get a bit more creative with the stitches and do other things with them to make them look different. quite small these so just take care to do them neatly as you can okay so I'll just show you one more with that padding in it so straight stitches in this one for the padding because I'm going to do slanted satin stitch over the top. I think I might slant the satin stitch the other way just so it doesn't merge into that one that I've just done. And you can put as many stitches as you like. I want to put one layer in like that and then you can put another few stitches over the top if you really want to build it up. Put as much padding in as you want. Just do another one at the edge there. I'm coming inside my blue line. Don't come up to the edge of the line with your stitching because that's where your satin stitch will go. So just fill in inside that blue line and then you can come across at an angle with your satin stitch. Straight up, over and straight back down. Makes that beautiful shape. So I'll finish this one and the others and then we'll take a look. So I've finished all my little padded satin stitch uh, fruit on the top here. I think they look really good and we'll just put our last um, plant pot on. So I've got this nice deep sort of purpley colour. I'm just going to stab stitch that down and we'll do some decorative stitches on it. I'm going to bring in the colours from the cactus for that again. So Place in position, exactly the same as before, just get that stitch down first. So I'm going to bring in the red colour from the fruit just to do a bit of decoration on my plant pot and we'll just do a little back stitch I think across the top. One more stitch. Let's do some French knots underneath. Do three, one in the middle. At the end. Cut the knot off. I think. I'll call that one done. Finish that off on the back. So there you go, five cacti for you to stitch. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me do that and you're inspired to have a go yourself. Don't forget there's a free 
PDF download for you with all the designs of the cacti and the pots as well. You can cut them out and mix and match them. Um, I'll put a link in the description below the video for you to um, download that from. If you've enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up. That will help more people to see it. Don't forget to subscribe as well so you don't miss any more videos. And check out our bunch of five videos over here where we've got lots more videos like this. Ways to stitch leaves, ways to fill in circles, stitches for outline, stitches for lettering. Lots in there, so do check that out as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Did you can turn it off? Finish, mate.